स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello everyone this is Dr Vishal Devedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and in this module we are discussing about the different types of cells so cell could be of two based on the structures so cell could be of two different types it could be a prokaryotic cell or the eukaryotic cell in the previous lectures we have discussed about the prokaryotic cells we have discussed about the structure of the prokaryotic cell and how the different uh, components are present in the prokaryotic cell we have discussed about the uh, the cell wall we have discussed about the uh, the different types of analytical bar barriers what are present in the prokaryotic cells and then we also discuss about the uh, chromosomal dna and as well as the plasmids and in the previous lecture we have also discussed about how you can be able to isolate the plasmids from the bacterial cell and how you can be able to use them for the different types of applications and how the plasmid is actually uh, giving the you know spreading the resistance or the different types of properties so in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the eukaryotic cells so when you talk about the eukaryotic cell uh, we have discussed uh, we with as i said you know we are going to discuss about the two types of eukaryotic cell one is called as the plant cell the other one is called as the animal cell so let's start our discussion about the eukaryotic cell so the higher animal higher eukaryotes have the multiple uh, organs to perform the specific functions whereas the uh, you know the whereas the whereas the cell is the structural as well as the functional unit of the life and it contains all the necessary infrastructure to perform the all the functions so besides uh, we have the different types of uh, cells like we have the prokaryotic cell we have the eukaryotic cells and within the eukaryotic cell you have the plant cell and the animal cells so before getting into the detail of Uh, what are the different organelles and what are the structure of the eukaryotic cell it is important to understand the difference between the plant cell as well as the animal cell so the structure of the eukaryotic cell the eukaryotic cells are much more complex and it contains many membrane bound organelle to perform the specific functions it contains a nucleus isolated from the cytosol and enclosed in a well defined plasma membrane so one of the classical feature is that the eukaryotic cells are actually containing the uh, membrane bound organelles to perform the specific functions and then you have the two different types of uh, Uh, eukaryotic cells you have the plant cell and you have the animal cell so let's see what are the difference between the animal and the plant cells uh, so these are the properties of the plant cell and these are the properties of the animal cell so what you see here is the cell wall the cell wall is present in the plant cell and cell plant has a very very robust and good uh, cell wall which is made up of of mostly the cellulose whereas the cell wall is completely absent in the animal cell uh, then the size the plant cells are very very large compared to the animal cell and the animal cells are comparatively small then the chlorophylls the chlorophyll is the light pigment right chlorophyll is the light pigment what is present in the plant and it is uh, completely absent in the animal cell there are exceptions where the animal cells are also having the Um, uh, chlorophyll like for example the euglena right 
so euglena is uh, uh, animal cell but it also contains the uh, chlorophyll then we have the vacuoles so there are large vacuoles which are present in the plant cells and these the purpose of these vacuole are that they want to collect the food material or sometimes they also collect the toxic substances uh, because the plants are much more exposed to the toxic substances whereas in the case of the animal cell it contains the small and the small number in the many number in the animal cell. Then we have the mitochondria, the mitochondria are few in the case of plant cell because the plant cell are not very motile right, the plant cells are static right, the, you have seen that the trees are present in the soil right. So they do not move around, so that is why they do not require a large quantity of energy for motion right and that is why they do not have the very huge number of um, mitochondrial cells. Whereas in the animal cell you have the uh, huge amount of animal cell because animal cell are very motile. So, because of the animal cell they are motile, they are they need more amount of energy and that is why they have the more number of uh, mitochondria. Then the lysosomes, the lysosomes are almost absent in the plant cell whereas they are present in the animal cell. Then we have the glyxosomes, the glyxosomes are present in the plant cells but they are absent in the animal cell. Then you have the cytokinesis, cytokinesis means the cell division, this is we are going to discuss in due course. Uh, so the cytokinesis is the cell division, cell division is always by the plate method in the case of plant cells whereas it is going to be by constriction in the animal cell. So these are the some of the uh, notable differences between the animal cell as well as the plant cell. But overall the basic property of these uh, two uh, cells are very very same actually they both have the plasma membrane they both have the many of the organelles what are present so let's start discussing about the different types of organelles what is present in the eukaryotic cell and we are going to then take up the some of the organelles what are exclusively been present in the plant cells and so on so let's start our discussion with the first organelle and that organelle is called as the cytosol cytosol is nothing but the water or the liquid part what is present inside the cell. So you see the cell which is there and it has a nucleus in the center and in between whatever you see is actually a called as liquid part whatever you see is called as the cytosol. Uh, so cytosol is the liquid part filled inside the cell and it contains the water, salt, macromolecules which means it contains the proteins, lipids, RNA. It has an array of microtubules fiber running throughout the cytosol to give the vesicular structure to its destinations. So within the cytosol you have the different types of microtubules running right. So these microtubules are actually making the road within the this cytosol and on these roads only the vesicles are moving and that is how they are actually delivering their content. Just like as you are ordering the material from the Amazon right or flip cards and then the, the guys are coming to your place right? but how they are coming they are coming because there is a road right there is a road to your home right and that is how they come using this road. So these roads are made up of, of the microtubules which we are going to discuss in our subsequent lecture and uh, they will use these roads and that is how these vesicles you can imagine these vesicles are the courier guys which are coming to your home and they are actually delivering to your place and how they are delivering that is a part of the very very uh, extensive uh, vesicular structure system and uh, they are actually having a very very dis well defined vesicular transport system and vesicular transport system is actually going to help the cells to, to deliver the material to their destinations. Besides this the cytosol exhibits the salt to gel transitions and such transitions regulate the multiple biochemical and cellular processes. So salt and gel transition is actually making the, either the cytosol more thick or more thin and because of that the localized salt and gel transition is actually going to make the uh, uh, the substrates more concentrated or less concentrated and because of that they can be able to enhance or they can be able to change the rate of these reactions very nicely. So apart from these uh, functions the cytosol has 
uh, many of these functions. So, cytosol has no well defined functions. It serves as a medium to exchange the material between the different organelles. It play in uh, you know various processes such as it is actually we are processes where the signal transduction or the translation is going to take place. So, cytosol has the cellular machinery which is responsible for the translation or translation means the production of the proteins right. So, production of protein uh, is called as the translation and that is happening within the cytosol. Now, one of the thing which people are very oftenly used right or interchangeably they use the term which is called as the cytosol or the cytoplasm and there is a big difference between the cytosol and the cytoplasm and it is very important that you should get a clarification. Cytosol is actually the liquid part okay this is the liquid part okay whereas the cytoplasm is actually consist of the cytosol and all other organelles. So, if you take the cell okay it has a nucleus right so outside this nucleus whatever you have that is called as the cytoplasm that contains the cytosol and it also contains the different types of organelles. So, that is a very very important un to you understand that you should say cytosol when you are talking about the liquid part and you say about the cytoplasm when you are talking about the content what is outside the nucleus. So, let us move on to the next uh, uh, organelles and the next organelle is, is known as the nucleus. So, nucleus is the central processing unit of the cell and it is homologous to the processor in a typical computer. So, since nucleus is also called as the master of the cell because it actually regulates it actually say it gives the instructions to the cell what it should do actually. So, why it is so because the nucleus is containing the genetic material and that genetic material has all the information it and that genetic material is actually going to say what the cell has to do actually. The, so, nucleus is a very very well is present inside a um, double membrane structures right. The liquid which is filled inside the nucleus is called as the nucleoplasm and the nucleoplasm is actually contains the uh, different types of molecules like so it is a viscous liquid which contains the nucleotides and the enzyme to perform the replication and the transcriptions and as well as the DNA damage repair system right. So, the nucleus contains the nucleotides. Uh, which is required for the replication as well as for the transcription and then it has the replication machinery. Replication machinery means it is actually be going to make the DNA another copy of DNA. So, that will require when the cell is going through with the cell division. Then it contains the genetic material the DNA in a complex fashion involving the several protein which are called as the histone proteins. So, compared to the bacterial cell the DNA is present in a complex with the proteins and that these proteins are called as the histone to pack into a nuclear bodies or to the chromosome. So, the chromosome when we say about the chromosome it is a authentic chromosome what is present in the uh, uh, in the eukaryotic cell. The chromatin in the eukaryotic nucleus so chromatin like the DNA content uh, is present in the two forms either it can be euchromatin or the heterochromatin. So, you can have the, the, the that chromosome which is going to be either be present as the euchromatin or the heterochromatin. So, euchromatin is a part of the chromatin where the DNA is loosely packed and it is transcriptionally active to form the messenger RNA. So, euchromatin is actually active whereas the heterochromatin is non-active or inactive which means the eukaryotic cell has the mechanism so that they can be able to make some portion of their genome active and some portion of their genome inactive. Why it is so? Because they do not want to expose their whole DNA for the cellular machinery and as well as for the different types of toxicants and because of that they can be able to protect. So, the DNA what is present in the heterochromatin is actually going to be more densely packed 
and because of that it is getting protected from the any kind of damages. So, they will be protected from the damages uh, and it is transcriptionally inactive. So, the portion what you are going you what you require for example, if there will be a requ requirement of the uh, insulin molecule right for example, if we require an insulin then that that insulin gene is actually going to be present in the euchromatin and that is how the insulin is going to be transcribed within the nucleus and that is how the insulin production is going to start in the cytosol. Since the nucleus is present inside this particular double membrane structure, it is actually well protected from the cytosol or well uh, separated from the cytosol by the very very complex structure and that is complex structure is called as the uh, nuclear membrane. So, the nucleus in eukaryotes are present in a double layer of membrane known as the nuclear envelope. So, what you see here is this is the nuclear envelope where you have the nuclear pore and this is the only portion through which the molecules can come in or the synthesis synthesized molecule can go out. The outer membrane of the nuclear envelope is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum and has the ribosome attached to it. The space between the two membrane is called as the perinuclear space and the in nuclear envelope is often has the nuclear pore and has and as per the calculation an average nucleus has the 3000 to 4000 pore per nuclear envelope. So, you have these type of nuclear pore and the nuclear pore is a 100 nanometer diameter and it contains of different types several types of protein. It is a gateway for the transfer of material between the nucleus as well as the cytosol. So, you cannot just get anything into the nucleus because then that will in that that is the case there are many uh, you know DNA damaging uh, agents what are present in the cytosol. So, they will not get into because the nuclear pore, nuclear pore is actually going to you know uh, have a mechanism so that they can be able to discriminate between who will be allowed to get in and who will be allowed to go out of this DNA. The RNA formed after the transcription from the DNA within the nucleus and it will move out from the nucleus into the cytosol to the nuclear pore. Similarly, the protein from the cytosol crosses the nuclear pore to start or initiate the replications, transcription and other processes because you require the signal from the cell also you require the cellular machinery from the cell which you so that you can be able to perform the different types of functions for example the replication and transcriptions and that is also being governed or that is also being completely being controlled by the nuclear pore now let's move on to the next organelle and the next organelle is called as the mitochondria and the mitochondria is also called as the powerhouse of the cell because it is responsible for energy production. So uh, and that is why we, uh, if you recall when we were talking about the plant versus the animal, the animal is having the more number of mitochondria because they require more energy compared to the plant cell. And as the organelle is actively involved in the generation of a molecule which is called as the ATP to run the cellular activities. Mitochondria is a double layer membrane bound its organelle with the different structural properties. Outer membrane is smooth right. So, this is what you see here this is a double membrane structure and the outer membrane is smooth right. So, this is the outer membrane what you see here is a smooth membrane. And, uh, and, it can, and it covers the complete organelle with the large number of integral protein which are known as the porins. So, on this outer membrane you have the uh, uh, proteins which are called as the porins and the porin allows the free movement of molecules less than 5000 Dalton within and outside the mitochondria whereas the large molecules are or the protein moves into the mitochondria through the transporter involving the signal peptides known as the mitochondrial targeting sequences. So, it is not like just like the nucleus, it is not like that anything will be allowed to get in or anything will be go allowed to go out. There is a small size like if it is a size of 5000 Dalton, that is the molecule which is going to be allowed get in through the porins. But if it is bigger than this right suppose you have the 50,000 Dalton 
then that protein has to be go through with a well defined me mechanism which means it sh uh, should have a signal peptide so that and that signal peptide should be of a mitochondrial targeting sequence. So, do not worry about these targeting sequence and all these kind of terminologies because that we are going to discuss. Inner membrane is folded into a membrane projection which are called as the Christie. So, what you see here is the inner membrane which has been folded in the form of the Christie and the Christie occupies major portion of the membrane and house machinery for the anaerobic oxidation as well as the electron transport chain to produce the ATP. Due to the presence of the inner and the outer membrane, the mitochondria can be divided into the two compartments. First, in between the inner and the outer membranes. So, this is the compartment, right? And uh, known as the intermembrane space, and the second inside the inner membrane known as the matrix. So, this is the matrix, what you see here, right? This is the matrix. The protein present in the intermembrane space have a role in executing the program cell death or the apoptosis which we are going to discuss in a subsequent uh, modules. Matrix is the liquid part present in the, in the innermost of the mitochondria and it contains the ribosomes, RNA, DNA, enzymes to run the Krebs cycles and the other protein. So, this protein what this portion what you see he, is called as the matrix and the matrix is actually going to have the or the cellular machinery it contains the ribosome so that you can have the protein production because you know that the nucleus the mitochondria has its own mitochondrial dna so it can be able to do the transcription and translation and that's how it can be able to produce the proteins then it also has the rna dna and it also has the enzyme for the running the krebs cycles and all of the proteins Mitochondrial DNA is a circular DNA. It has a full machinery to synthesize its own RNA, which means it can have the ability to synthesize messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, and as well as the transfer RNA and the proteins. A number of differences exist between the mitochondrial DNA and the difference and the DNA what is present in the nucleus. One of the classical difference is that the mitochondrial DNA does not contain the introns. So, it does not contain the intron compared to the DNA what is present in the nucleus. Now, let us talk about the cellular, the, the ATP generation machinery. So, this is the ATP generation machinery which is called as the uh, which is present in the uh, mito, in, which is present in the plasma membrane and the system what produces the energy is called as the electron transport chain which is actually a very very huge complex and that's why these are labeled as the complex 1 to complex 5 and these are all complexes are the integral proteins and they are present in the inner membrane of the mitochondria during the metabolic reactions such as glycolysis krebs cycle uh, produces large amount of reducing equivalent in the form of the NADH2 and as well as the FADH2. Electron transport chain processes the reducing equivalent and the flow of electron to the different complexes. So, what happens is that the elect electrons are moving from the complex 1 to the complex 4 and that causes the generation of the proton gradient across the membrane. So, what happened is it is actually going to ac accumulate the large quantity of the proton. Then the proton expelled in the intermembrane space return back to the matrix through the complex 5 and this is what you see here the complex 5 which is called as the ATP synthase. And, uh, what happen is that the big, when the electrons are moving from the complex 1 to complex 4, they are throwing the proton from the this side to this side and that is how there will be accumulation of the proton. And then when this proton comes back to the matrix part, matrix side, it is utilizing the this complex or this uh, ATP synthase and because of that the ATP synthase is coupling the ADP plus pi to generate the ATP and that is because ATP synthase is a very very big complex it has the F1 unit and as well as the F4 unit and it is actually uh, so ATP synthase is a mushroom shaped multimeric protein complex mainly composed of two proteins F4 and F1 
FO is a membrane bound portion. So, this is the FO right which is a membrane bound portion and F1 is the complex present into the lumen towards the matrix. FO F1 complex of mitochondria harvest the protein motive forces to catalyze the phosphorylation reaction AD in, uh, responsible for generating the ATP. Now, what are the, what are the different reactions? What are the different uh, function of the mitochondria? So, the first and the most important function of the mitochondria is that it is involved in the ATP productions. Then the second is it is actually be responsible for the generation of reactive species to kill the infectious organism. So, when there is the injury of the infectious organism within the mitochondria or within the cell, it actually induces uh, the, uh, the production of the reactor species. Reactor oxygen species means any molecule which actually contains the single electron. So, because of this single electron, they are very, very uh, toxic, right? So, because they are toxic, they are actually being used as a weapon to kill the microorganisms. Then the mitochondria is used to track the tray of a family. You know that the mitochondria, if, if you see the production of or the how the sexual reproduction occurs, right? The sexual, during the sexual reproduction, the, uh, you have the two species, right? You have the sperm, right? And you have the ovum. This ovum is actually a complete cell. It contains all other organelles. So, it contains the mitochondria also. Whereas the sperm is only containing all other organelles, but it only contains the DNA. So, when there is a fusion of the sperm and the ovum, it takes the DNA part from the sperm, whereas it contains all other organelles from the ovum. So, because of that, when the zygote is being developed, it actually contains the mitochondria, right? And that mitochondria is from the mother side, okay? That mitochondria remain constant because even if this particular individual will again go, go for the sexual reproduction, that mitochondria is actually going to carry forward. And that's why you can be able to use the mitochondria to track the family tree. Then the mitochondria is also having a role in the program cell death or the apoptosis. So apoptosis is what we are going to discuss in the subsequent up. Uh, modules, but I have given a very short write up so that it will actually help you to understand what is apoptosis. So, apoptosis is a program cell death involving the series of event involving cellular uh, metalloprotease known as caspases in an adverse event of exposure of the cell to the cytotoxic agent or to the environmental conditions. It activates the cell surface signaling to activate the cytosolic proteases. In addition, it disturbs the mitochondrial membrane potential to cause the release of a protein which is called as the cytochrome C. As you remember, right, when we are talking about the transport of material within the cytosol and outside, we said that the porine is only allowing the 5000, 500, 5000 Dalton proteins, right. But if there will be a membrane uh, potential uh, problem, right, if there will be a drop in the potential, then that will allow the leakage of the proteinaceous substances from the mitochondria and one of such protein is called as the cytochrome C. And once the cytochrome C is going to be released from the mitochondria, it is actually going to activate the different types of DNAs like and that is how the DNAs are actually going to destroy the DNA what is present inside the nucleus and ultimately it is going to destroy that particular cell. And this is actually a very, very programmed death and that is why this is called as the apoptosis. Now, let us uh, understand the first process how the mitochondria is actually synthesizing the ATP. So, to understand and to explain this process, the people ha have uh, uh, put forward a theory which is called as the chemoismotic hypothesis. So, what it says is that the F1 particle so, you remember, right, it has two particle, one is FO particle, other one is F1 particle. FO is the integral membrane protein, which is only responsible for holding the F1 and it also gives the path for the you know, protons to enter, right. 
whereas the F1 is actually a multimeric protein complex and it also it contains the three different proteins. It contains a protein which is called alpha subunit, it contains the beta subunit and it contains a gamma subunit. So this is the gamma subunit what is present in the center. And the function of the gamma subunit is that it actually only transfers the complexes from the alpha to beta. So what you see here is that these alpha and beta proteins are or the subunits could be present in two different conformations. Either it could be present in the loose binding conformations or the tight binding conformations. So when they are present in the tight bind conformations, they will bind that particular molecule in very tightly. So what will happen in the beginning? In the beginning, the ADB and the PI is actually going to come and bind to the loose binding site. So once they will bind to the loose binding site, the gamma subunit is actually going to take these molecules and put it into the another subunit. And once they will reach to another subunit, the ADB and PI are actually going to mix with each other and that is how they are actually going to form the ATP. As soon as it forms the ATP, it will again be flipped to another subunit and that subunit is open complexes and that is how it is actually going to uh, you know, it is going to release the ADP and then it is actually going to take up the new molecules of ADP and PI. So this, this cyclic event is going to continue for many rounds and that is how it is actually going to keep giving you the ATP synthesis. So I have requested uh, uh, one of the professor in MRC and uh, based on my request, I think he has shared a movie which actually explains these processes very nicely. So, uh, Professor Walker is, uh, I, I, we, are, we should be very grateful to him that he has shared this uh, very good animated uh, schemes. So, in this scheme, uh, the, 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 they have shown how the ATP synthase is actually synthesizing the ATP utilizing the different types of complexes. So what you see here in this uh, movie that this uh, cyan color uh, portion is actually the F4 particle and all these what you see here is F1 particle. This is what you see is the gamma chain whereas the this blue yellow is the alpha chain and this is the beta chain. So what when you, you will see that when the it is actually utilizing the uh, proton motive force it is actually rotating and when it is rotating it is actually accepting the ADP and PI which is a in the loose binding site and once the loose binding site is rotating, it is converting into a tight binding site and that is how the ATP and PI are mixed together and it generate the ATP. Again there is a rotation and because of that, the it is getting converted into the loose binding site and that is how the ATP which is formed in the previous cycle is going to be released. So this is a very very uh, you know good movie to uh, understand the whole process and that is how you will be able to you know appreciate how these events are actually been happening. So what you see here is actually it is showing how the ADP and PI are combining with each other. So you see these are, these are different bonds with, with, through which the ADP is combining with the PI and that is how the ATP is formed and that is how it is actually been released from the uh, system. So this is all about the uh, ATP synthesis and its mechanism by the uh, ATP synthase. And what we have discussed so far, we have discussed about the eukaryotic cell and within the eukaryotic cell, we have discussed about the, dif uh, uh, the differences of the eukaryotic cell with the plant cells. And uh, then we have discussed about the uh, nucleus, we have discussed about the cytosol and we have also discussed about the mitochondria. Now in our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss about the some more organelles from the eukaryotic cell and then we also going to discuss some more interesting aspects related to the cell. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you.